Here we go. Um, oops. Okay. Try that again. Okay. Uh, good morning to you all. Uh, let's see, I think there's about 200 folks here. Uh, thank you to the Igloo Programming Com Planning Committee and the Igloo Developers Day Planning Committee for putting this conference together during these uncertain times, uh, allowing those of us all over the world to attend. This is really a thrill to be part of an international conference. And I see that I'm presenting today with folks from the United Kingdom, Germany, Israel, India. So you're gonna get a lot of different perspectives on libraries and ex libris development ideas this very first day of the conference. So along the lines of breaking out of your shelf, I have noted this project and many other cleanup projects in Alma have a Bob the Builder, can we fix it, yes we can mentality to them. So I hope this presentation inspires you to break out of your shelf and work with departments outside of your own to fix user notes. So to give some context of what type of system I'm referring to, I want to let you know who we are and our history in Alma. So I work at California State University Northridge, better known as CSUN. We have almost 40,000 students, so a very large student body. We were a former Millennium system until 2017 when we moved into a shared system across 23 California State University campuses in 2017. So here's a map of California and the different campuses and where we are all over the state. Northridge itself is part of Los Angeles. It's part of Southern California and part of the famous Valley as in the Valley Girl song or movie from the 1980s. And I'm personally coming to you from Reseda, California famous for being the fictional home of the Karate Kid, the All Valley Karate Championships, and also home to the current Netflix series, Cobra Kai. So what do I mean by user notes in Alma? So this presentation is going to be about cleaning up user notes in Alma. Have I changed my... Okay. Uh, I won't be talking about any other notes in Alma. And there are a lot. There are notes in bib records, item records, acquisition records, and so on. User notes are in the Alma user record on the tab named notes, which in this screenshot, it's the fourth one from the left. And you'll know if your user record has notes, if there's a little blue triangle on the top right of the notes tab name. Many of your user record notes might look like this, especially if you migrated from Millennium, notes like p-type, total renewal, total checkout. Your user notes also might look like this on a cleaner, newer user record. Pay attention to the third note here. We need this patron to re-sign their device agreement. And this is an important note that we always want displayed when we look at user notes. So what's the problem? You might be wondering, what is the problem? Why should I clean my Alma user notes? Our systems live in the cloud. We have unlimited space. The problem first came to my attention when public services staff were letting me know that the old Millennium notes and lots of extra user notes were getting in the way of notes that they actually needed to see. So in this example, you can see when you go to manage patron services for item checkouts, this is what you see for the user in the user notes area, just the Millennium notes and nothing else. Also, here's an example of the test record I just showed you. It had three user notes in it, including one that the device agreement needs to be re-signed, but you can't even see that here. A library worker taking a quick look at the user notes here doesn't see that particular note because it's below all the other notes. So other reasons to clean your user notes. 
Fewer notes to read through when working with a patron at a busy desk. Some notes you want to assess quickly. And the service desks are very busy when we're physically open. Did this person sign a device agreement already or not? Have we had problems with this patron before? Many of the notes might make sense to a longtime employee. You might know to ignore something like total renewal, but a student does not. If the user has something overdue, you, that, that automatically Alma will put that in there and that pushes down our individual user notes even more. And the point is to get rid of extra information so the notes that you care about are easy to see. Another fairly new reason to keep your user notes clean is the new advanced record search in Alma, user record search, which includes searching user notes. So this was a new option added in July 2020 Alma release, which gives you many, many more ways to search user records, including notes, but it also might expose how much clutter you have in your user notes or how many misspellings you have in your notes. So this is another good reason to clean your user notes so this new feature can be more useful to you. So before we start fixing user notes, we need to understand the nature of user notes in Alma. So they are freeform text. I'm not sure of the upper limit on how big your user notes can be, but I did a lorem ipsum of a thousand characters and it still accepted it. So the sky's the limit, I guess. Again, this is really, this is going to block out your manage patron services area for user notes. So I wouldn't recommend really long notes. And you cannot change the order of the notes. So maybe you have a note you really want at the top instead of this thousand character note, you can't do it. A few more caveats about user notes that you should know. So this first example here is an internal user note and you can see that it can be deleted or edited from the three dot button on the right. But this is an external note, like our device agreement external, and it cannot be deleted or edited this way. You see the options to do those things don't even show up in the menu, but I will show you later how to get around this problem. Something else you can't do with user notes is update or remove them with an Alma job. And you would expect this is something that you could do with the update notify users job. Uh, and here are the two screens of many things that you can do with that job, uh, including add notes, but you cannot remove notes. Also, please note, if you do this method and add notes to a set of user records, the notes will all be external automatically. So be careful with that. And I'll talk about that later in the presentation as well. So now that we understand a little bit more about the user notes, are you ready to fix them yet? Here are a few more things to do before you start. So I would recommend if you have user purge or deletion plans soon, do those first. Fewer user notes to fix on fewer users. For example, after we migrated to Alma in 2017, we had 122,000 user records because we had not cleaned up the records before the migration. I cleaned those up to about 50,000 users which is an appropriate number for us with our population. If you really don't want to work with all your user your records yet, perhaps stick to active and unexpired records if you want to focus on the records you're going to be working with the most. Understand where your records come from and how many and when are they being updated. So at CSUN, we get a delta of new and updated user records every weekday at 4 a.m. Uh, which is about now. Uh, so right now we're in week four of our semester, of our fall semester. So this is only about a hundred user records updated or created a day during this time. But during July and June 2020, many of our students are registering for the fall semester. So all these user records are getting updated and created. Uh, this picture right here is of a job that we ran sometime this summer and over 1500 users were processed. So this is not the time that you want to be making user record changes. Um, now, now is a good time, but not uh, when all your students are registering. 
And it's a good idea to determine how many user notes you have at the beginning, especially if you're big on saying, well, we started with this many and now we have this few. So you're going to want to create a new analysis in the user subject area in analytics with something as simple as note is not null. So when we started this project, we had 142,000 user notes. So that was a lot. That's a lot to clean up. So let's start with some of the cleanup. So the problem of our messy user notes first came to my attention in the spring of 2019. So in order to check out things at our library, we would like the patron to show their student ID, their identification. But in the interest of keeping our patrons enjoying and using the library, we made exceptions if they forgot their ID, but we put a note in their user record so we could see if this was happening a lot and often, either with users in general or particular users. And anecdotally, there was a student that said, oh, I did this 20 times in the semester and I got away with it each time. And we said, well, okay, let's see if that's really true. But we didn't want to punish students who honestly forgot their ID, but we did want to let other service desks know uh, this patron never brings their ID. So we have a service desk supervisor's monthly meeting and one of the staff brought up this note had been informally agreed upon many years ago, but there was no agreed format. So it was all over the place. So the group agreed in this meeting on, okay, here's what the correct format is going to be. And it looks like this. It would say used one time ID exception, the initials of the person, the initials of their department, and the date it was added in Alma. So here's an example of one, a note I would have put in there with my initial CLH, my department system, and October 22nd, 2018. So as the systems librarian, I agreed to clean up the existing user notes to make them match the new format. How hard could that be? I just run some jobs and remove a bunch, update a bunch, and it should be done in about an hour. It was also agreed in this meeting that we wouldn't punish students for forgetting their user ID long ago or even last semester. So I would delete the old notes from previous semesters and just save the ones from the current semester. So here is my first attempt at getting a list of these particular notes. It seemed if I looked for exception, written a few different ways, and I looked for ID in a few different ways that might work. And I certainly could have done exception as a regular expression to catch the cases, and I will soon. But this was easier to see what was going on for demonstration purposes. And here's the results that I had last time I did this cleanup. You can see, there you go. You can see we have uppercase and lowercase. One is sometimes written out, sometimes it's a number one, but this is pretty clean and in the right format. So problems with this analytic, you can probably think of some of these already. The analytic that I showed you gets some of these type of notes, but the notes were not always written correctly. So once I noted all the notes in the correct format, I had to make analytics to try different variations. And here are real examples of text that was in the user notes to all indicate the same thing. These are all real uh, things. So um, it seems exception is a very hard word to spell. Uh, I also like the need CSIN ID. Um, so these are the kind of things you're gonna wanna clean up and have things in the same format. So I have my list of user records to clean up after I took out my false positives and captured all the misspelled and wrongly formatted notes. And note, not everything that has the word exception in it is one of my CSUN ID exceptions. So here's an example of an old note in our system that has the word exception in it, but one I don't want to delete. So I had about 2,000 of these to update since the particular type of note had never been cleaned up before. And I started out deleting these one by one worked on them at the reference desk, when I was tired before lunch, in front of the TV. And there's just, there's gotta be an easier way to clean these up. So I started to create my own Python program to do this. Um, but as we should all, all developers should do, always be checking GitHub and the developers network. And when I was in the midst of doing this, I found someone else had done what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna show you that. So, a most excellent systems person 
named Meredith Foster at Westchester University of Pennsylvania in the United States created this Python program that does most of what I need to do with user note deletion. I'm also a big regular expressions fan and it supports that as well. So you can visit this URL to read more about this program and see if it'll work for you. I won't run this live, but I'll show you some screenshots of what it will look like when you clean your user notes. So what do you need to use this program? And I'm sure other developers will be talking about this, but maybe this is your first uh, Igloo, your first Ex Libris conference, and you don't know about the API keys and all of that. So I will give you that introduction since I'm first. Uh, first thing you need is an Alma API key that is set up for users, production, read, write. So like in this graphic. I'm not gonna get into how to create an API key here, but you can read more about it at this link on the developers network. And the other thing you'll need to run this program is a Python installation with module TK enter. So running the program, the first thing you need to do is set up a pattern. So go ahead and run Alma user note remover in whatever you're using to run Python and you'll see something like this when you start. And you're gonna wanna set up your pattern uh, and then update a few things. So API host is whatever your region is. So if you're in North America, it's API-NA, hosted exlibrisgroup.com. Uh, most of you are in another region, and so it would be API-EU, API-AP. The instructions for the program will help you figure out what your region is. And then you'll copy the API key that you just created. So you go ahead and you export the list of primary IDs that you made in your analytic a few slides ago to a plain text file. It might look like this. You wouldn't be blurring out the primary IDs like I did, uh, but it would look like this. And then you load the file in Windows like this, select ID list button, and then choose your text file. And now your IDs are imported and ready to go. This is the message you'll get when things are imported. You might want to check and see if that number is what you expect. And then the first time through with the program, you might just want to try a few IDs and see how it looks. So just run cleanup and you've started. Here's a work on five IDs that I did at the time. Some other things to note here. The regular expression is a case insensitive search. So we're finding exception in all caps or lowercase or whatever else you want to do in regular expressions. The program output will tell you what was non-matching or matching. So this is great when you still have notes you want to keep in the user record. You don't want to delete all of them. And there's no output file, but you'll know it's done because it says all IDs processed. So how do records look in Alma after updates? So this is the one I showed before. So we just have one user note left. And then perhaps more important, the user history indicates the operator API comma ex libris was the one who updated this record and not me. So uh, that's good six months from now when somebody says, why did this note go away? And you can look and say, oh, that's something I did with the API. And you can see the ID exception note is gone according to the history. So, I found the program really robust in general. I ran it on thousands of records at a time. It was great. Uh, I wanted to share a few examples of errors you might find with using the program. So a reminder, this program won't delete external user notes. You won't even see them in the output text. You might get connection errors. I saw these a lot more when I started working at home on a slower internet. And then here's an error I ran into when checking for some Millennium notes. Request cannot contain two identifiers with the same value. So I don't know how that record got saved in Alma in the first place, but Alma doesn't want to accept it now and won't let me write it with the user API. So just note the user ID that had the error and come back to it later. Or you can just wait and rerun the analytic the next day to see what was missed. So I always like a slide in a presentation of where I messed up. Uh, so here's one for me. Uh, so you don't make the same mistake when cleaning user notes. So before we migrated to Alma, all our students that had designed a 
device agreement were indicated by a millennium node of P code two equals C or it equals L. So the department that used that note had to train every student that worked for them to look for that particular note to confirm the student had previously signed the agreement. So I thought I would be all clever and export the list of all user records with this particular note from analytics and then import that set into Alma. And then I would run update notify users job on this set of 1400 users to add the new note. And I would worry about deleting the PICO 2 note later, uh, but I really wanted this note in here and something that the students could read. And so I did this and I was so proud. Um, and then a few days later, the staff came back to me and said, those new notes you created don't seem to be there anymore. So what happened? So it turns out the update notify users job made all the notes external, which meant they got overwritten in our daily updates. And I said, okay, well, I'll fix this. I'll just delete those notes I just created and find some other way to make them internal. And then I realized I can't delete these notes, these external notes in bulk or individually because they are external notes. So how do I fix this? So perhaps to inspire you to present things at the conference that you learned this week, the conference next year, uh, the timing on this problem, I had just come back from eLuna 2019. eLuna is the equivalent, the North American equivalent of IGLU. And so I had attended this workshop by Jeremy Hobbs in Python that worked with APIs. Could I modify what I had learned there to what I wanted to do with user notes? And the answer is yes. I already had the right version of Python set up and the correct modules ready. So over the next few months, I made my own changes to Jeremy's program to handle making user note changes. So I'm not even sure the program resembles what Jeremy had in the first place, but it was really a great place to start to learn more about the Alma APIs and particularly the Alma user API. So if you want to start looking at the format of user notes in a way that you can write code for them, the API console in the developers network is a great place to start. So using the link on this slide and the, collect, the correct XLibris server for your region and the same API key that you've been using throughout, you can use the get user details here to get data on a user record and get more familiar with the format. So I my, enter a user ID in the API console. So in this case, I just use my test record 8675309 and I put this in here. And then I end up with a console result that looks something like this, which is much, much longer, especially the response body down there. But I wanted you to see like this is what it would look like if you're doing it correctly. So using that console, I can give you an idea of what the user note fields look like in JSON and XML. So here's an example of the JSON. So the first screenshot here is a start of a JSON file for a user record. Like I said, they're very long. Uh, record type public, primary ID, first name, last name, et cetera. And if you go much further down in the record to find user notes, and if you have no user notes for this user, it looks just like this, where you have user note in quotes, followed by a colon, then left bracket, right bracket. That means there are no user notes in this record. And when you do have user notes, it looks like this. So each one will be listed with a note type. That's the drop down box when you create a user note. Uh, note text is the important part. That's what we want to parse for text where there's something we want to delete or change uh, from external to internal. And then lots of other characteristics for our user notes. And then each individual note will be listed inside a set of curly brackets with colons and commas. To give you an idea of what it looks like in XML instead, it looks like this same record, slightly different order and format. So the first picture here is the start of an XML file for a user record, version, record type, primary ID, et cetera. And if you go much farther down in the record, you see the user notes. So if you have no user notes for this user, the format would be like this. You have the less than sign, user notes, 
then a backslash, and then a greater than sign. And this is what it looks like in XML when there are user notes. So in the XML format, you need to be careful of user notes plural and user note singular. One is used to encompass the whole set of user notes, the plural, and one is for each user note, the singular. So for each one of the individual user notes, they start with user notes singular, followed by the segment type, internal or external, and then the note type, that's the drop down when you create it, and then note text, that's the important part that we want to parse, and then lots of other characteristics for our user notes, and then the next user note will start. And when it's all done, then you have a user notes end tag. So you can see that the JSON and XML are somewhat the same, but quite different. And you'll want to remember which one you're using when you're writing code to parse these. So after learning all of this about the user note format, I was able to create a Python program to change external notes to internal. And you can find about that at this GitHub link. So in particular, it changes external user notes to internal user notes, but only those that include phrases that you specify. And once you run the program on these user records, you can delete and update the notes as they are now internal. So going back to the example from earlier in the presentation, you can see we, you left your hat in the library and device agreement external are both external notes from the green check mark in the right hand column. And so when you download my code, you update the strings to search list. You could do this in a config file as well. If you change the code, the code currently searches for Millennium note text. And we would update it to include the strings that we were particularly looking for to change. You download this code and you're ready to run the program. Same permissions, user production read write for your API key, replace my fake API key and config any with your API key, and then replace my region NA with your region. And the program looks like this when you run it. This is the box you'll see with the CSUN logo. You can certainly add your own logo or a picture of a cat or anything like that. Um, you just add the file name for wherever you have the primary IDs in the current directory. A file looks like this with primary IDs. And if you still have the print statements turned on in your IDE, I left a lot of print statements in there because uh, I like to see what's going on. So you can see the text like this as it parses through the user notes. It would say, this is an external note. This is not in the match list. Keep this note. Um, so that sort of gives you a little more comfort of what it's doing. So for before and after changes, um, oh, okay, program results. So when the program is successful, the window will update with the last primary ID, the first and last username, and the note. Notes successfully updated in user database. So I was able to use this tool to change all the notes I had accidentally made external into internal so they could be kept on SIS updates. Your error file will look like this on a clean update. And then if you have some things to fix, it would look like this. It'll give you the error and what the identifiers were. So here's what these external user notes look like now. The green checks are gone. And now you have the menu options to edit or remove these. Uh, but do note when you make those changes from external to internal, that does not show up in the user history for some reason. Uh, when you delete this or edit it, it will show up, but not changing from external to internal. And when you use my program, I also have errors you may want to know about. Uh, in particular, if a user role has changed due to OMA updates, there's a bunch that didn't used to require a service unit and now they do, you might see errors like this. Mandatory field is missing, user role parameters for role number 37. I, who knows what role number 37 is? Maybe somebody on here does. Uh, you would get a message like this. Uh, my solution to that is keep adding service units to roles or deleting roles. It doesn't tell you what this is, but uh, good candidates are work order operator, receiving operator, receiving operator limited. Okay, 
So now that I was really familiar with user data and deletions and the user note remover, I was ready for the big one. I was going to delete the Millennium notes we had left from migration. So I double checked with everyone that these were okay to delete. One decision point for us is we migrated over three years ago. So if we wanted to use that Millennium note, it was really out of date and for users that probably have graduated. So break out of yourself and ask. So here were our Millennium note numbers. So most of them had, were in 26,000 different records. Um, I wanted to know what these numbers were when I started. You can see those top five have about the same numbers. P code two and P message not used as much, but these are also Millennium notes. So we had 135,000 Millennium notes total. This can be a lot of records you're updating at once, so you might want to start small. I had just finished working on the P code two notes with device agreement signed, so I thought I would start with cleaning those. This is a smaller set than other Millennium notes. So my analytic note contains P code two, and then just skim through the whole set of results just to make sure there's no false positives like don't delete this P code two note or something like that. Export that list of IDs and then run in the Alma user note remover with a regular expression to catch P code two. And this works great. So P code two, that was a smaller set. Um, but soon you'll be ready to move on to one of the big sets, something like tote checkout that is in all the migrated records. So I have my list of 26,000 user IDs ready for these. You can continue to work on the same set on each Millennium note type or do it all at once. So you filtered a note contains any tote checkout and your results might look something like this. So eventually you can work on all the notes at once and your regular expression might look something like this. And here's what it looks like when it runs. So keep checking your analytic daily when you're working on this. Perhaps make a widget, put it on your homepage, check daily until complete. Some IDs will error out, especially if you have connection problems. Um, and then you can just export the IDs from the analytic each morning for an updated list. Run it early in the morning or at lunch before the analytics cut off. And in the end, you will have a very small set that you need to look at by hand. So we had 135,000 and I had about 91 that I had to go in and fix the roles, things like that. And so we went from 135,000 to no results. And um, I'm very big on making a special analytics message when I have no results on a cleanup project to cheer myself on. So if you're not familiar on how to do that, uh, there's a nice link where they explain that. Um, so to wrap up here, here's some other options for user note cleanup. Um, these are not ones that I used, uh, but other ones that look good as well. Here's some links for more information. Uh, I am using the spider IDE for my development and that works really well. And I'm done. <laughs> so what questions do you have? Okay. Thank you, Christina. And um, there are a couple of questions. You can also have a look at them if you open your Q&A tab. Oh, okay. So I see uh, Asborn says, what are the response time for handling large sets of users? So. I would sort of just set it up and, and run and, and leave the room. Um, and that's a great question. It was really fast. <laughs> it wasn't, um, I'm trying to remember, maybe 10 a minute, maybe 20 a minute. Um, it was pretty fast, but I would kind of set it up and then I'd go make breakfast or something uh, and then sort of see what the results were. Um, let's see, not a question, but a tip. Uh, you can exclude user roles from the JSON XML when updating a user with the APIs. The user would still be updated, but user roles won't be touched and you won't get the error message. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that with everyone. Uh, this is a good presentation. Where can I find your codes? Can we use your codes to clean up other notes in bibs? I don't, oh, that is, that is a good, uh, that's a good idea. That should be my next, uh, my next presentation, cleaning up the notes and bibs and items. So I haven't worked with those yet. I was really keen on getting my user notes cleaned up. 
but yeah, my code is on uh, is on GitHub. Uh, there's a link in the slide, um, and I think stuff will. It's GitHub C L Hennessy H E N N E S S E Y. And uh, as for the presentation, uh, Mehmet can answer that. I think we'll be posting them after. Yeah, yeah. The the presentations will be <clears throat> normal of it, normally available in uh, uh, the proposal space um, uh, program listing afterwards. So thank you again, Christina. Uh, if there aren't any other questions, then uh, we'll